Hello, I'm the Game Viewer, and the reason why I'm not doing this sitting down right now is because we have something incredibly special to show you. Oh, I say we, I have something good. And no, it's not that. I, I would be putting it on the table, it's just too big. That this is the T-Rex from Jurassic Park, still in its box. Let me just get this duct tape, sorry, duct tape, uh, bubble wrap off. This is it. Look at it. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? This is an MIB, a mint in the box, Jurassic Park, T Tyrannosaurus Rex, the big red one. This is the one that sold like hotcakes one, that drove the kids mad in the 1990s. Oh my god, I kind of just want to, does its button still work? Well, I mean, it's mint in the box, so yeah, it's going to. Jesus. Wow. So, just in, well, I'm not taking it out of its box for one, because I'm not, I'm, I'm not stupid, and I know how much it's worth. So here we go, we have one actually out of the box. This is the one that Whitney broke. Yes, that's right, if you're watching this, you did break it, didn't you? Um, but if it wasn't her, it was probably going to be me, because I was playing with it too. <laughs> so it just looks amazing like just feeling it, it it feels real and look at that it balances like you can't get that with the t-rex sorry indominus rex or jurassic world you can't get that with the t-rex from jurassic world either both of them none of them stand up by themselves and if they do they'll fall over randomly you know during the night or something and actually somebody reported that it was just standing still and its arm just fell off just, just like that. Its arm just fell off. Didn't do anything to it. Just popped off. Just look at the packaging on this. There is so much love. Look at this. You can feel the heat from the jungle. You can almost imagine like these crickets or something chirping in the background as the sun sets on this terrifying prehistoric landscape. Uh, so there you go. We'll, we'll actually show you the box first. Um, so on the side we get the T-Rex looking menacing. Uh, underneath the Jurassic Park logo and then on the back you get this beautiful depiction of um, <laughs> Ronald Reagan <laughs> attacking the T-Rex and Alan Grant just stood there thinking what uh, what on earth am I doing with Tim you know bring the kids along why not as well along the bottom you get the other dinosaurs so he you have all the um, all the uh, characters you can get so Tim Alan Ellie Ronald Reagan, Dennis Nedry. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's gonna be an ongoing thing now. Uh, the Velociraptor, these were the, the cheap dinos, the ones that were like $10 less. Um, so Velociraptor, Dilophosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, Dimetrodon, Celiophysis, then you get onto the two electric dinosaurs, the Velociraptor and the Dilophosaur, which made um, screen accurate sound effects, or at least, you know, similar sound effects. And then you get onto the bigger ones, so you have the Stegosaur, the Triceratops, and the young Tyrannosaurus Rex, which didn't make an appearance in the movie, but if you've read the novel, you know it made an appearance in that. And what a disturbing one. I, I still remember it killing that guy. And that was years and years ago I read that novel, and it just stayed with me how brutal it was. So yeah, look at it. It's awesome. Like, I have no words. It's just how amazing this thing looks. And, and sorry, again, just like the back, this is how the toy is supposed to be played with, with a booming volcano behind it. That's how awesome. <laughs> Does it have a lake? It even has a lake. Look at this. Look at the work that they put into making these. Oh yeah, put a lake in, uh, a volcano, and this, like maybe the volcano, maybe the volcano is special, like CGI'd in. That looks a bit like it was just photoshopped. But this is all real, I actually set this up. Now, normally they would just put it on a green screen and then just put some cool little effect behind it. But look at this, it looks so cool because it is cool! Oh man. So there was a lot of controversy about like this T-Rex because when it was first shown on the um, on the uh, action figures it was brown. Oh my god, that's the post! Jesus, I'll be right back, even more stuff! And they, so that this is it. This is the one we have all been waiting for. And uh, oh. This joins the ranks of, like, the mint in the box, like, devil, like, these two. But, like, the Blum and Jeep Wrangler. Oh. 
It's beautiful, it really is. Of course, I like, I am wanting to pass these on, but uh, this one would of course be a pretty penny because it is still in this box and um, they're pretty hard to find these days. And most of them are in America as well. So I've actually had this one shipped over from America and they put a lot of packaging in this thing. Like Jesus, and I, I don't blame them. I do not blame them one bit. So on to another package. Oh yeah. <laughs> And uh, of course, in your here we go. So this is, oh my God, I've never owned this before. This is a Cyclops Raptor Thrasher out of restraint gear. How cool does it look, guys? Looks awesome. Looks even more crazy in its picture where it has white eyes. Oh, wow. Now this is a really, really rare one. And um, I got it in a set and, um, like all in all, it was worth it. Like just look, look at the paint on that. Look at each individual tooth. They are, well, they're individually painted. And that's something you don't get with the Jurassic World stuff. You do, they're all just like one slab. Actually, I, um, I went and looked at some of the Jurassic World Raptors because after reviewing them ages ago when they first came out and there was just so much paint and it was just blobbed. You know what they've done? They've actually like skimmed out on the paint, so there's even less paint. But now the teeth are barely painted. It's ridiculous. They went from one extreme all the way to the other. Look at this. Look at like each individual tooth. Look at the detail on this thing. It's like look. It's got like a huge gash mark on its back that looks really cool. The mold is just beautiful. Not only that, but the paint job works so well. You got some airbrushing on the underneath actual like uh, like solid paint and then oh i just don't know i like it, it it just it puts to shame everything it looks far more sleeker more appealing more dinosaur-y than the jurassic world raptors that look like a solid lump of plastic with just a little bit of a head sticking out like a fat beagle basically this looks sleek it looks cool it looks deadly it looks awesome but that's only one of them i, I was really chuffed with this because there are some rare ones here like this this is the uh the Triceratops. Um, <laughs> he looked at his little face. Uh. So he comes with some more restraints that you can put on his head. This one. Um, I don't know if this was Wave Two, but again, I don't. I don't really remember seeing this one in the UK either. Again, I was just a little kid, and I don't really think I was shopping for them at the time. I was just. Yeah, I don't really remember shopping. It was just birthdays and Christmases. So the only dinosaurs that I really knew were the ones that I got. And I never got this little guy, but it's really cool because it fills up the whole package. With the raptor, there is a lot of empty space. With the triceratops, you know, to fit a bulky figure in like this, it feels quite heavy as well. And not only that, they put the restraints in too. It's just, it's overall just an amazing job they've done with that one. Is it my favorite? Is it my favorite? Oh, it's my favorite. This thing, this thing made my Christmas when I was a kid one of the best Christmases in my life and it's I got three of these I got three of these raptors and because of that I could like play out raptor packs like you know tracking down humans and stuff and of course I got the t-rex as well I was a spoiled brat okay I'm not gonna lie I was a spoiled brat but it was amazing and I think this uh yeah you see how in the packaging they have the bent tail now I think because it's been what you know almost 20 years that tail will stay bent like that unless you run it under some warm water. But if you just look, like I forget what these things look like new. The paint, like it is so vivid and beautiful. There's not a single scratch on it, which there shouldn't be because it is in the box. And just alone, these whole, like the packaging, perfect. We're talking solid straight. Look at that. It's better, it's like a tiny bend, but that's it. This is beautiful. And at the end, there is only a tiny little bit of og og dog earring <laughs> og earring so you can see on the bottom they always give you like a little example of how the the thing is um is supposed to be held up and put together and on the back you get again with the moss and the trees in the jungle and you just want to be there as a kid i wanted to just have some sort of landscape or have some mossy background like that just to play with my dinosaurs it's probably why when I saw um, like um, Warhammer and stuff and they all had things like that, I was like, this is cool. I want stuff like that. Yeah, I was a nerd, I don't know. Is another Ian Malcolm. Oh wow, the plastic's so smooth. It feels so new. It's beautiful. Um, so we've seen this guy before. Um, you can see it's very, very basic. 
the uh, the American ones didn't come with the little bit of paper that was in the background. For some odd reason, the UK ones I think came with instructions. I think the instructions for the American ones are on the back there. You can see them with his little backpack. I think the English ones did have that, but for some odd reason, they came with an extra sort of disclosure, a bit like that. Um, that uh, I actually I don't even know what it did. It was like black. There was a black bit of paper with it too. So I'm not exactly sure uh, why the English ones had that and what they even had. And here we go, the Juvenile T-Rex. This thing uh, I got when um, I was about 13, probably a little bit, little bit younger, about there. I think I was in primary school. So then I would have been a, a bit younger. Um, so it comes with the little muzzle that you remember from the film. Uh, it's a little leg cast and this leg actually pops out like it pulls out a little bit and it's attached by string or some sort of a uh, cable so it actually does act like it's broken uh, sorry it's broken um, and the level of detail on the face of this dinosaur is beautiful um, I actually had it in a box like this but I just couldn't contain myself I had to open it I think but I think I did open it I'm not too sure it's in the attic somewhere I had Sarah Harding I had her version um, Sorry, her action figure of this, and I did have to open that. I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. I just had to open. <laughs> I'm a little kid. What did you expect? And the last one is another one of my favorites, and this is the Pachycephalosaurus. This thing kicked ass. It was awesome with its head button, little button that's on the back. It's also restraints that you can like pretend it's been captured by the hunters, and it sort of smashes out of it when you click that button. Uh, we just look. Look at that sunburst head. That's, I think this is like the American version because I don't know, I feel like the one I had when I was little actually had a red eye and instead of it being yellow on the top of its head, it was uh, like pale white sort of. And I think it had a yellow eye, I'm not too sure. Um, it might have had a red eye. But of course, all these Pachycephalosauruses had dinted in heads because kids would just ram it against their toys ram it against walls as a mist like things dived out the way and stuff and i mean it's it's code name is a ram head i think you can see is it up there ram head i think so yeah ram head code name ram head pachycephalosaurus five pounds 76 and of course this was another dinosaur that um had Packy in the name and of course whenever and it i used to call them packies because that's you would abbre abbreviate tyrannosaurus rex to T-Rex, or you'd abbreviate Parasaurolophus to Para, and Pachycephalosaurus, Pachy. But of course now you've got to be a little bit more PC with your names, <laughs> yeah, because apparently uh, that's that's apparently offensive. Um, like calling somebody English is offensive, I think. Um, calling anything anybody that what they are is offensive, basically. Right, let's get these things off the table. Right, more Lost World stuff, starting with... Da, 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 da. Nick Van Owen with her hat. Da, 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 da. <laughs> like I've I've never seen Nick with a hat. I've always seen him in his pictures, and he always had a hat, and he was ginger. But actually, here he does have a hat and a different face. Um, I don't know if it looks more like him. I don't think so. I mean, you be the judge of that. I've never like this is something I've never had, so I never showed that one. But what came with it is this. It is Dieter Stark. And this little compi looks like it's a slightly darker green. It'd be awesome just to have all of them. Like hundreds of compies and just attack them like they do in the movie. Um, we have a Roland Tambo. Roland, Roland, Roland. And that little baby Pachycephalosaurus is really well sculpted and uh, really well painted. And it just really puts to shame uh, the creatures that came with... Um, Oh, the, cre the like the mystery packs in Jurassic World. Like, it's a thing. If we got stuff that looked like that, then in the in those packets, then yes, it would be worth it, and they look good. But they just look so cheap and naff, like terrible plastic and just a terrible paint job. I mean, look at this. Even something that looked like that. Here's another Eddie car that came with this, and look at it. It looks so much better than anything, and it's a solid bit of plastic. I really was disappointed with those. So that's what was in that package. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, okay, I like what this is. This is what Blue and Chris Pratt should have been. This is the motorbike dude from uh, The Lost World. 
What's kind of cool is he's um, he's actually putting his net or lasso around the raptor that is in Jurassic Park as the electronic raptor. And on the back, you get a cool little pose of him. Oh, it's just, it was such a good toy. Like the, I, I mean, I can't take it out because it's mint in the box. I mean, look at that sellotape. That sellotape's black because it's seen a lot of, it's seen better days. <laughs> And, and of course, this side's very weathered. Obviously, this was sticking out on the shelf like like this bit here. It's kind of cool because it looks like it's blue. But I quite like the look of that. Oh, that's interesting. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, they had... If, if Kenna had the license, I, or I really feel like... Or if just something was different, whether they had more budget or God knows what, this would have been amazing. But they didn't. And I don't know why it, like, how hard would it have been to make Chris Pratt an action figure and then make a bike like this? What was really cool with this one, and you can, you can sort of see there, is half the, the uh, bike wheel was mudded and it was really air, sp like air sprayed, like spray can sort of. So it looked like it was dirt that had been kicked up. And as well with like the underneath of the bike as well, it was sort of dirty. It looked really, really good. I, I'm... Not even kidding, this was one of my favorite toys. And the fact is, I don't know if it shows you, but the bike can snap in half. Like the bike, well not, it doesn't snap, it's supposed to break. If you hit the, um, if you click this little uh, bit but that's behind it, he comes with a gun. He comes with a gun. I think I lost that gun. I had no idea he comes with a gun. Oh, that's cool. So you can have him like ride around and then he lassos a dino, but the dino's too strong. So his bike snaps in half and he like sort of skids about. He takes the gun off his back and starts shooting the dinosaur. How cool is that? Oh my God. Yeah, like that in itself, that's the idea behind it. They had an idea, they ran with it and it's beautiful. He did make an appearance in the Lost World film where he's like driving underneath like an Apatosaurus is uh, he drives in between its legs as it's walking. Um, but there was some nice stickers that went on it and my god, this was m one of my favorite toys. It really was. Just look at the back. Look, this is the model itself. This is what it looks like. I want to show you. I want to show you a close-up of it because I'm sorry, I cannot sing this thing's praises enough. Look at that. Look how cool that looks. There's a lasso and everything and a gun on his back. Like, and you, ju you just don't get that these days. I know I harp on about Kenner and I harp on about the old Jurassic Park toys, Lost World toys. And in some cases, the uh, Jurassic Park 3 toys, when they've been done right, they really have. And I've just noticed it's like a circular circular patch. Like if I can get the shine on it, you can see there, there's a circle or a sticker was that's taken off the gleam of the original uh, gloss. Um, but it really, like it really left a lot to be desired from the Jurassic World line. And, Kids that, like, and you guys that are watching, if you are kids, like, this is what you deserve. You deserve stuff that was this cool for that. And I don't know, maybe you do have stuff like that. And maybe I'm just missing it. But, like, this is what I remember being awesome as a kid. You, Like, I guess that's what it is, isn't it? It's like, I see all this stuff and I'm like, that was awesome. That was awesome. And it's very nostalgic. But I look at this not only with nostalgia, like, glasses, but... I tried to take myself back and like with the Jungle Explorer, there was a lot of things they could have changed. They could have added dolls. They could have added like the in little game, the in computer possibly with little cups that might have been molded of the, like the glass of water sort of. Um, although I would have seen loads of kids trying to fill up those glasses and then recreate the scenes. Like that would have been cool. But even just to have the little computer with a sticker or doors that opened, it would have been awesome. And at least the, the yellow on the underneath, because it is all, all just green and the lights in the back. Maybe maybe those lights, like the stickers actually came off. I don't know. But this, I, I can't fault it. I really can't. It's It was probably really cheap. Well, not too cheap, obviously. And this is, it has the little mark, evil hunters. Evil! <laughs> so if you, like, I think the evil people have their logo red. So like Roland Tembo have it red, whereas people like uh, Ian Malcolm have it yellow. So there's two sides, like, you know, you can have the hunters and the good people. And you had that even with Jurassic Park. They had um, like the dino wranglers and then they had the evil dino capturers or something like that. They did do stuff like that before this movie even came out or before it was even an idea. Um, 
So I'm gonna crack on with some more stuff. I just wanted to shed some light on this is what Chris Pratt should have been. Just imagine it even cooler. I don't know what else they could have added to it. Like this lasso is detachable, so it didn't even need to be on there. Um, so I don't know, a Chris Pratt would have been awesome. But we never got it, unfortunately. So, on to the next box. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. Basically, I ordered about 20 of these raptors. Uh, somebody was selling lots of them. Like there's this raptor, there's the electronic raptor that's in here. Like, I'm gonna get them all out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you them all, because it was unbelievable. Well, maybe, maybe it's not this guy, actually. Because that was a Dimetrodon. Why is there a Dimetrodon in here? Oh, the batteries died. Oh, that's a shame. Well, that's a kind of a cool lot. Like, um, as well as collectors, you know, wanting these dinosaurs, I sort of want to give back to the kids, you know, and without spending fortunes of money. And when you think about it, I'm just going to try to, I'm trying to say, oh, well, you can, you can sit back like that. That's cool. There we go, done. So yeah, I mean, like, collectors want them, and collectors will obviously want to pay a little bit more. But for kids that just want to play with them and, you know, make childhood memories that they will never forget, um, like, I, I just wanted to get quite a few open ones, un, un, like, unboxed ones that, when you think about it, right, the Basher or whatever they are, the cheap ones that are Jurassic World, are in store for £10, right? And... These are so much better quality. Just like, like just paint wise, mold wise, just overall finish wise, they're just so much better. So would you, would you, I tell you what, right? Would you rather buy a new, um, one of those like toys, like the Ankylosaur that just tips its head and has screw holes all over it? Or would you rather buy this Velociraptor for three pounds less? I feel like you'd buy the Raptor. If I'm gonna say in all honesty, I would. That's what I would do. So, I don't know. You can you can get both, why not? But I just thought like, that would be cool to get them back. And does your little Dimetrodon's thing work? Oh yeah, he's got little chompy action, yum yums. Oh, here we go. So, do you remember the Jurassic Park 3 figures? With the Diver Man Dan and the Spinosaur, well, they got a re-release. And there's Jurassic Park, I don't, toys. I don't know whether these are still around. Well, I think they were sold at Universal Studio. Um, only at Toys R Us, apparently, but I got it on eBay. <laughs> um, so there's, there's like repaints of them. So this is the Diver Dude and comes with actually a really nicely painted um, Spinosaur. He's like, Cherry. Oh, maybe that could be the female Spinosaur. Oh, they could be. There's like, a, like the male one is sort of gray. Like you could, with the original one that was made, it was sort of gray with this really shiny blue paint on it. So that could be its girlfriend. Like maybe, like, hey, that could be the boyfriend. I don't know. Maybe pink isn't defined by his gender. Whoa. And then we have this one. Um, oh, oh. I got a little thank you note. Thank you for your business. Stop by our store anytime. I will do, don't worry. So uh, I'm going to put that in the bin. <laughs> the military guy who, if I remember right, I don't know if he came with the T-Rex. Maybe he did. Uh, of course, there you go. A little bit of action. So he's got a grabber. He must have actually. So the T-Rex was originally brown. It was, I think it was all brown with little bits of green on it. Whereas this one is gray with lots of dark brown on top with some orange the teeth are beautifully individually painted i'm sorry the original one didn't even have that the original Jurassic Park 3 didn't have individually painted teeth um it was actually all just brown i think its mouth was all brown so they've really done a good job with that he is now a, a navy seal i don't know he's not military anymore well he's not uh sorry i don't know what you would call him uh, infantry he's not infantry he's like some sort of navy dude now. He's he's moved up in the world, this guy. Uh, we've got quite a few. And of course we've got another one. I like the bite marks. It's like T-Rexes just burst through there and sort of bit away on the plastic. Can you see that? That's awesome. A little bit of thought that they put into that is great. So, um, 
And now we have... We have Billy. We have Billy, but uh... Alan Grant's head's been transplanted on. I'm... I, I don't even... On the back, it, it shows Billy, but this is Billy's actual figure. They've repainted his hair, so it's, it's like a light brown now, so sort of mahogany. But the actual dude... <laughs> That's why I bought these! Oh, I remember now! Oh my god! That's why I bought these. It's because I was like, I couldn't believe my eyes. I really couldn't. Take a look at that face. Take a look at it. It's, it's all like, I couldn't believe it. I can't believe that it's Alan Grant's face. Head on Billy's body. It looks so wrong. And that's the reason I remember now. That's why I bought these. I just couldn't believe it. So on to something new. Here they are, as requested. All of the raptors. All of them. I'm not even kidding. Hold on. Let's see if we can get this in focus. They're all raptors. And I thought this would be really cool. Like, so many of them. I think there's only one that is missing an arm. There is a certain raptor that I've never seen before, though. I will admit, if I can get it out, it isn't good. It's this one. Get off! This one here. Do a close up of them. Because I, I. Like, it's darker than the other colours. Like, we'll compare it a regular one, where it's not mounting the other one. Jesus! There you go. Uh, so this is the, the one that I've never seen before, which has JP03 on its tail, sorry, on its leg. So it's exactly the same as the other ones. But if you can see the difference, look. How weird's this? This must, it must be from a different sort of, like, line or something. It's so strange, like, its arms are all black, but... I don't know, maybe it's a, a rare one? I don't know, somebody, it's had its tail missing. <laughs> Somebody's had a good chomp at its tail or something. They've seen better days, that has to be said. But it's quite interesting that we've got this one in here. So yeah, I'm gonna put them all back in there. In you go, good raptors. Come on, come on, come on, off with it, come on. Why were you still taped to the back of it? There we go, it is the danger 10,000 volt sign that has been custom made by, um, I, I can't remember his name. Oh, it sucks because I was gonna, I was gonna link him to it and just say what a wonderful job he's done with it. Just to recreate the exact sign that's on the security fences, on those electric fences that are so iconic of the Jurassic Park franchise. And I have nowhere to put this as of now, but I'm sure I'm gonna find a place for it. It is beautiful, um, like it's it's a complete replica, uh, it's lovely vectored on, it's not print so there's no um, sort of pixel di dilution or anything you want to call it, I don't know what you'd call it, like fuzziness. It is all like, um, I don't know what you'd call it, oh, it's like acrylic, uh, something like that, um, that have just it's been printed on and cut out and it is beautiful. Uh, I'm pretty, oh, I imagine it's weather resistant if it's uh, vinyl. That's it, vinyl! That's what I'm thinking of. And it is, it is fabulous, it really is. It's something that I've wanted for a long time. Like, I remember picking up a 10,000 voltage little sign on the floor and putting that on my door when I was a kid and I was like, yeah, I'm like Jurassic Park now. And look at this beautiful piece. It is quite sturdy, it is two bits of um, solid plastic, I don't think it is plastic. And then you can see there's like, they're sort of like glued onto this um, big black bit of more plastic. It could be wood or plastic, I'm not too sure. So um, I think I got this on eBay. You can probably find this exact one on eBay. Uh, if, you, if you're wanting a sign like this, that's a complete replica and good quality, I would definitely suggest this one. Um, oh, I'll, I'll try to link it. Look in the description and hopefully I've linked in there if I found it, otherwise, that sucks, because I wanted to link it to and say what a wonderful job they've done with this. Because uh, they go around cosplaying as Alan Grant and Ellie Sadler uh, wherever they go to like Comic Cons and stuff. And I was like, oh, I did that for Halloween, it was awesome. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's going to end the video on this wonderful high voltage note. And until next time, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you later. Bye bye!